Hi, my name is Rich Lilly from Project Leadership Associates. Today I'm going to talk to you about Azure Site-to-Site -Site VPN connectivity. Today we're going to talk about Azure Hybrid Cloud connectivity with Azure Site-to-Site -Site VPN tunnels. We first start by looking at the big network picture. When we look at, at overall networks and connectivity to services, uh, there's three major tiers. We start with the internet clients. These are typically external facing clients or partners coming in from a front end. Um, they're coming in either through load balanced IP addresses, direct IP addresses, maybe NAT rules sometimes. We can also have ACLs or prevent DDoS attacks, so we're doing some level of security filtering. We can also leverage Traffic Manager in Azure, for instance, to do global load balancing across Azure services, or even leverage Azure DNS for a DNS resolution. The other tier here is we have our virtual networks. So these networks are what actually connect our virtual machines in Azure together, as well as connect between different networks in different uh, Azure regions or, or uh, subscriptions as well. We then look at our backend connectivity. So this is really one of the most important parts of a hybrid cloud with Azure today. So this is really allowing us to have our on-premises services connected to our Azure cloud services. And really one of the key points to hybrid cloud services with Azure. Uh, there's two different methods we can focus on. One is secure cross-premise VPN connectivity using a site-to-site -site tunnel. Uh, the other is using a, a private connection through, say, a private MPLS or a private connection to a vendor like Level 3, BT, etc. These are all different ways we can connect to our various services within Azure. When it comes to the Microsoft Azure hybrid offerings, there's three major ways to connect to these services. There are three different methods. Um, one is a point to site. This is probably uh, one of the most common for, say, our developer track or small offices. If I'm building own, my own personal environment up there to test a new application or a lab, uh, this is an instance where I personally, my laptop, connects to this service and I can connect and work with any of these resources. I also have a secure site-to-site -site tunnel, so this is what we'll be focusing on first today. Uh, this is primarily targeted at SMB, enterprises, maybe if you don't have an MPLS circuit or you know, want to uh, leverage a, an investment in the express route. Um, this is really, again, connecting all your Azure compute resources to your on-premises resources. Again, probably one of the easiest ways to connect, doesn't require any special contracts or working with any specific vendors. Then we look at express route private connectivity. So this is an option where we actually look at two different ways to leverage that. One is actually going through a specific provider or going through their data center where they then have large connections uh, or leveraging an MPLS circuit that you may already have. This gives us a way to extend that MPLS circuit into Azure. Microsoft has enhanced the gateway for site-to-site -site tunnels quite a bit, especially since the Barcelona TechEd announcements. In this case, we get better throughput, almost double the amount of the throughput of the standard gateway. We also get more site-to-site -site tunnels, three times the amount of the standard gateway. This comes at a slight cost, we're about 50 cents per gateway hour, so it runs you about $350 a month uh, at kind of a direct cost, and obviously there's a discount that for anyone under an Azure Enterprise Agreement. As you can see from the table below, we look at different throughput, again, doubling that from 100 to 200 Mbps, and then the tunnels from 10 to 30. We also focus on no encryption option as well. So this is great for your internal intranet, uh, intra, intra VNet connections between subscriptions. For sharing a connection, this can make that, that throughput much quicker. We also do offer PFS support for IKE, and now a big ask was operational logs as well. So now it comes to creating, via, uh, creating the site-to-site -site tunnels or working with the logs and why they're connecting or why they're not connecting. We can all access this through the management, uh, management portal now as well. Another option that was asked was forced tunneling. So for enterprises that have strict security requirements about having traffic from these Azure public-facing virtual machines go out, we can force tunnel that traffic back over our site-to-site -site tunnel. In addition, this also allows us for a level of auditing and inspecting of that traffic as well. So again, to meet security and compliance requirements, this can definitely be a value add for a lot of organizations. As far as some of the virtual private network ecosystem devices, so in the Azure portal today, you'll see a handful of VPN devices. Um, in, in essence, you'll see probably about 10 to 12 different vendors that are supported today. Um, again, you're not going to find all these in the portal from a script generation perspective, but they're all supported and will work. We'll talk about how we can generate some of the scripts in the demo in just a few. Let's talk about Express Route. So this is a specifically a private connection. In this case, we're going to look at specifically how to get Azure on our network. In this case, again, you know, we've typically had to go out through the public internet. This is more of the site-to-site -site tunnel model. Uh, what we can do with Express Route is, is, is implement that within our existing MPLS fabric. So in this case, it's really an extension of our data center fabric and makes it that much easier to connect to our Azure resources. The other huge benefit of this type of connectivity is it's very high bandwidth, low latent, where a site-to-site -site tunnel uh, doesn't hold well to, uh, to latency and sometimes bandwidth restric restrictions as well. 
As far as Express Route partners, again, there's two different ways we can leverage Express Route. One is, is through a network service provider, which we just talked about. In this case, this may be your AT&T, your, uh, your BT, or Verizon, for instance. This is really extending our MPLS fabric mesh. The other option is going through an exchange provider, someone like an Equinix or a Level 3. In this case, we can provision our components in their data center, uh, whether you know physical or virtual, whatever solutions they offer today. And they have a very fat and strong connection to Azure, so multiple 10 gig links, uh, HA and, and disaster recovery on that side of it as well. In this case, if we don't have investment already in an MPLS circuit or fabric today, this can be the next best option for a high bandwidth, low latent connection. As far as express route locations, there's about 20 different Azure regions throughout the world today. Um, as you can see from this list, there's various express route locations today. You'll start to see some new ones being announced here in, in the new 2015 year as well. You can also see some of the list of partners that are supported in the, uh, in the region as well. One of the other points that's important to note as well is path diversity as well. So one, one thing we can do with our VNets and express route now is link this to multiple different VNets or multiple different subscriptions that now support even a single VNet. So in this case before, we'd had to, had to do one circuit per one subscription or per VNet. Now with the ability to do VNet stretching across multiple subscriptions, they give us the ability to extend our express route connection across all these as well. We can also have each circuit uh, be processed through different locations and service providers. So if you want to add a second provider, even outside of AT&T or maybe another vendor, we have, have the option of doing that now as well. We can run these in an active-active or even an active-active in a second location. We also have the option of aggregating that throughput across multiple lines, and this again comes back to the restrictions based on the standard or the performance site-to-site -site tunnel gateway. Let's take a look at the Azure portal and how we can interact with our Azure virtual networks. So in this case, we have an Azure virtual network. We can actually go and browse into that network and see what's configured. Now, I already have an Azure site-to-site -site tunnel created between my on-premises corporate environment and our Azure VNet here. In this case, we can look at things such as our data in, our data out, our gateway IP, and then anything that's provisioned specifically on this network. Let's actually take a look at what happens when things get provisioned on this network. I've already pre-provisioned some local networks that exist in my environment. So for instance, you can see PLA is named here with a couple of our local subnets. This allows for the routing rules to be deployed properly in our VPN profile, as well as a public-facing VPN gateway IP address as well. You can also see I've configured DNS servers. Some of these are on-premises, some of these are in Azure. And depending on what VNet I want to use, I may, I may apply different ones based on if there's a DC deployed or not. Let's actually go dive back into that Azure virtual network and actually see what it looks like to configure our Azure virtual network. So in this case, you can see I dictate our Azure DNS servers. So anytime a, a machine comes up in Azure, there's actually no static IP address assigned. It is set to dynamic within the operating system, and it's pulling from an allocated pool. That's then getting marked so until we actually shut down or unallocate that virtual machine. So in this case, we can see that I have a site-to-site -site tunnel created. We can actually go down and look at the address space. Now, we can leverage any address space in the 172.16.10. or the 192 space. In this case, I've dedicated just a Class C address space for my Azure virtual machines. You can also see I chose a separate slash 29 for just my gateway IPs. And this is actually what my public-facing clients connect to. Now getting back to the dashboard, this is actually where we would then create the virtual network or the virtual gateway. Now I've already created that, so I'm not going to go ahead and delete that network. But once I do have that created, essentially I take that configuration by hitting download VPN device script. Now we can see here, as I mentioned earlier, we only get defined scripts for Cisco, Juniper, and Microsoft. Now in this case, I can just go ahead and open up the Cisco script. And let's actually go ahead and see what's actually in that Cisco script. It's very generalized information in the fact that we pull information like ACLs and NAT rules, IPsec information, tunnel information. Um, essentially, we can port this over to any of the supported vendors that I showed in that previous slide. Once we have that, we bring that over to our networking team or individual to create our Azure site-to-site -site tunnel. And at that point, we should be able to see our connected tunnel here. As I mentioned, there's also management logs in Azure now as well, so we can also leverage the Azure portal to troubleshoot these logs as well. This is how we can leverage site-to-site -site tunnels in Azure today. My name is Rich Lilly from Project Leadership Associates. You can reach me at rlilly at projectleadership.net or at Twitter at, at Rich Lilly. Thank you.